Now I'm at the point you want to be with me I'm vibing out at a higher frequency Cause everything that I want and I'm gonna be It's when I wake up, that's when I start to dream Someone you love is talking down, here is the plan Let it fall through like a handful of sand Nothing happens overnight, what you must understand If you dwell on the bad, then you don't stand a chance Something you want upset, saying why it ain't mine yet That's because now you have yet to change your mindset People don't put their mind to rest while they're so wired A lot of people go to sleep and wake up tired Power of positivity and persistence Say that I can, we'll just sit back and witness Make an impact when our time is done Make money, help people, and have lots of fun Whoa Drill, the first pitch only show that features entrepreneurs from all walks of life competing each week for more than $50,000 in cash and prizes. Hosted by legendary entrepreneur, sports executive, and investor David Meltzer. Five contestants have just two minutes to deliver their most convincing pitch ever. Who will fold under the pressure and who will thrive? Congratulations, great pitch. After the pitches are complete, the judges will deliberate to decide our champion. You violated some amazing rules. Will they rise to the occasion? Give us more of your heart and your passion rather than what you felt like you had to say. What is it that we need from you? Because that's where you're going to get somebody. Will they blow away the judges? That was 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 probably one of the best pitches I've ever seen. (laughs) Will they be crowned champions? You are the winner of Two Minute Drill. David Meltzer hosts Two Minute Drill. Nick, uh, why don't you go ahead and set the room, the incredible moderator, the young man taking vacation time to join us today. Nick, Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year and Happy Friday, everybody. And we're excited for today's Power Hour with the one and only David Meltzer. Welcome, everyone. It is 6 a.m. on the West Coast, 9 a.m. here on the East Coast, and we are here David Meltzer's Power Hour, of course, in the best room and clubhouse in the community, the Breakfast with Champions. Today's topic is, uh, of course, as we're rounding out the year here, it'd be, uh, I'd be lying to you if I would say it's not one of my favorite topics, as this is such a beautiful time for reflection as we move into 2024, which is in alignment with today's training topic, which is takeaway of the year. So David's going to start us off by sharing his takeaway, and we invite everybody in the community here to please join the stage or request to join the stage using the hand in the lower right-hand corner of your screen so you can share your takeaway of the year as well. And before we get started with this incredible conversation, let's make sure to share the room with all of our friends. I'm sure you can hear them. So we're going to do takeaway of the year. Uh, And so go ahead, put in your notes your biggest takeaway for the year. We'll be blessed to join you. Oh, here he goes. We're ready to go. Uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, my takeaway for the year uh, is about distance, and it's the distance between. Oh, Nick, you got a little feedback there. Uh, distance between behavior. Do you hear that, Nick? Sorry. I think for Moon's on me. Okay, there. Sorry about that. Um, so, the the biggest way for my ear is the distance. The distance between your behavior and the outcome results and consequences. And 
figuring out how do I shorten, uh, lessen the distance between my behavior and the results, outcomes, and consequences that I want or better. And the reason that that takeaway is so important is that the failures that I see, the disappointments, setbacks, void shortages, and obstacles that I see in my own life and other people's life are uh, situated in that distance, the distance between behavior and results, outcomes, and consequences. And the reason that it exists there is because we don't have, <clears throat> as humans, capability of understanding or knowing the instant result of behavior, which is progress. And the instant result that occurs from good behavior is good progress. And the instant result of bad behavior is bad progress. And eventually, if we don't shorten the distance between the outcomes, results, and consequences that we want or better, and the behaviors that are uh, put forth towards that potential, we're going to quit. Um, and it's bad behavior, and we don't see the consequences, results, or outcomes, the negative progress, we're going to continue. And both of these will create an exponentiality of outcomes that we don't want if we quit the good behavior and don't quit the bad behavior. And so my biggest takeaway for the year is understanding the capabilities uh, that we have as human beings and trying to shorten the distance between the behavior uh, that we feel will best put us in a position that's better, a better situation or a better outcome, a better result or a better consequence in, and that result consequent and outcome that is better. And what I found is it takes two things to shorten that distance. Um, the first thing is wisdom. Uh, and wisdom uh, can and will be created by surrounding ourselves with the right people and the right ideas. So showing up here uh, to Friday trainings or to the Breakfast of Champions or reading the right books or listening to the right books or podcasts or showing up to the right events or surrounding yourselves with the right people that feed you, not bleed you. And when we realize that the wisdom of mentorship, of teachers, of coaches, mentors who give us uh, directions to where they are or where we want to be, teachers who teach us how to take the steps in order to effectuate uh, that directive or that uh, pursuit, and then finally coaches that bring the best out of us. And, you know, some people are capable of, of doing all three for us. But my biggest takeaway, Nick, and I think we'll have the greatest contribution to myself and my fans friends and family is to help them with number one, the wisdom to shorten the distance between their behavior and the outcome consequences and results that they want are better. Uh, but most importantly, the second component to shorten that distance is faith. And the best option faith that I have found in order to effectuate shorting that distance is a faith that there's something bigger than us, something bigger than us that, uh, is omniscient and all powerful and all knowing uh, that loves us, protects us, and promotes us even more than our mom. Uh, and so, uh, you know, with wisdom and faith, we can shorten the distance between behaviors, outcomes, results, and consequences. Uh, and so, uh, that's my takeaway, Nick. And I'm going to turn back to you to reset the room as well and to give us your takeaway, Nick. Absolutely. My takeaway for the year, and then I'll go ahead and reset the room and we'll start, start to take some takeaways from the community here. Uh, my takeaway for the year is a quote um, that uh, between David and his good friend Clinton Sparks, they had shared with me, and it just resonated very deeply, which is, Bear what you say, because you're always listening. And that really resonated with me as it pertains to self-talk, both the dead very negative sense. Um, I think a lot of us can always be our own strongest self-critic, right? But it's always very important to be intentional about what we're saying, both internally as well as externally, because you are always listening. Uh, 
company to date had developed my understanding even deeper uh, by sharing with me that, uh, and Dave, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was um, 80% or 90% of our thoughts are reoccurring. And of those, a very, very high percentage of, as well are negative thoughts, right? So it's just something that I think myself as well as everybody in this community is intentional about. But if we become even more intentional and give it the attention it deserves, um, it will help us you know, continue to level up and empower ourselves even further as we head into the new year of 2024. So be careful what you say because you are always listening. That is my takeaway of the year. I love it. Be careful what you say, do, think, feel, and believe that are stored in your subconscious, which holds 40,000 of the same thoughts every day, uh, communicates with your epigenetic layer of your quantum being, your genetic and energetic inheritance that's passed on, not just every day repetitively to yourself, but passed on to everyone around you and even passed on to the next generation. And so understanding that what we say, do, think, believe, and feel is not only 80% of it negative, inherent in our subconscious, but 90% repetitive. And so we want to create the greatest exponentiality of outcomes, results, and consequences, you know, making sure we're very aware of the Actually, thoughts, beliefs, and feelings that we have in alignment where we want to be better. That's a great takeaway, my friend. Uh, all right, let's get into the community. Let's uh, see and get exposure to what people have been exposed to and has resonated with them uh, each and every day here for the year. So, Nick, go ahead, bring up our first friend. Absolutely. And we have an abundance of requests. So, thank you so much for everybody in the community. I'm going to get things started here. We have the one and only Mike, who has joined the stage. Um, so, Mike, so much for joining us. Happy to meet yourself and share your Hey, guys. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to share, obviously, the takeaway. Um, and it's been just an incredible year, and I really appreciate uh, this community on the morning. Bro. Um, I'm pulling it up here. One of the things I wanted to share was a quote that was recently shared. It just really resonated with me as I kind of look back and kind of uh, identify the impact that it's made on my life and kind of get into that self-talk piece as well that you shared as well, Nick. So just give me one second. I don't want to make sure I, I put through as well. So give me a moment. Sorry. Here it is. Impressions are determined by today's impressions. And that takeaway just really, that quote really resonated with me. Um, it really made me think, obviously, the language and the words that we say to ourselves is in the impact that today can make on tomorrow. So there's my takeaway, and I appreciate you guys having me on. I appreciate this community as always. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's one of my favorites, Mike. And I learned that takeaway uh, from a guy named Blaine Bartlett, who's uh, one of my mentors. And uh, to that measure, beyond the subconscious, that host 40,000 same thoughts, what influences those 40,000 of the same words, actions, thoughts, beliefs, and feelings is the daily inputs that we have. Uh, and if we're repetitive enough, as you know, within the context of uh, our neural pathways, it takes a minimum of 21 days of repetitive behavior in order to wait a neural pathway, which creates the repetitive positivity, not negativity within our un conscious and subconscious uh, is the idea of today's impressions, our behaviors today, our tomorrow's expression. Uh, and it would be indicative in the conscious level that we have daily practices or a habit machine in order to control uh, our nature as human beings and our capabilities of human beings in order to effectuate a more positive trajectory, a more positive result, outcome, or consequence. And so within the context of that idea of today's impress, we want to make sure that our impressions are positive so that our expressions are positive. And that once again will shorten the distance between your behavior and the outcome results and consequences that we want are better. I love that one as well, Mike. And 
uh, that is a, a great one to carry forward with our community and, of course, with yours. Thank you so much for always being here. Nick, uh, who's up next? Yeah, let's go ahead and do a quick reset of the room here. We are about to round out the first quarter of what is the severe empowering training and, of course, power offer with the one and only David Meltzer. Um, so thank you so much for everybody for joining us. Of course, today's topic is the takeaway of the year. So as you hear so many incredible takeaways shared, if you would like to share your course as well, feel free to use the hand in the lower right-hand corner of your screen to request to join the stage, or if you are already on stage, feel free to send me a message in the room chat um, so we can make sure to get all of these takeaways in. Um, now, with that said, I'm going to pass it over to Robin, who's been patiently waiting. So, Robin, happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining us, and feel free to unmute yourself and your takeaway of the year. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, you calling on me to speak today. Hi, David. Hi. Um, Good morning, everybody. So actually, David hit what I was going to talk about as my biggest takeaway, um, is really falling in love with that invisible progress. Funny enough, I reminded myself about this last night um, as I was reflecting on my day and my week so far. So um, just emptying your mind and allowing your cup to uh, have new thoughts and new ideas been um, and just saying this to uh, new opportunities and the betterment of yourself and believing in uh, having that faith in you that yes, the progress is happening, the change is happening, whether or not you see that um, you know, initial evidence of it. So um, that's definitely has been a huge takeaway for me this year. And, um, and as far as uh, um, saying yes to yourself is basically just uh, the growth that I've had this past year, um, realizing that I want to say yes to myself um, and choose to make my decisions and live my life what's going to serve me best instead of serving others, whereas um, I was pouring out and I wasn't receiving as much. I wasn't taking care of myself and putting myself first. So that's been another uh, huge takeaway for me. I'm uh, very proud of that. So. Yeah, we can't give what we don't have and <clears throat> taking care of ourselves so we can take care of others. Uh, and I love the idea of uh, loving the invisible progress. And when love the invisible progress consistently and persistently in the pursuit of our potential, we also become aware of the invisible assumptions uh, that we've made. And some invisible assumptions are creating interference between us and our potential, and some are accelerants aggregators and they allow us to compound but the, the results the outcomes the touches of favor the consequences that we do want are better and so understanding and raising awareness to the invisible love and the invisible progress and the invisible assumptions are a great takeaway for everyone and it requires like that great wisdom and great faith in order to do so and so if we seek wisdom and we faith we're going to get what we seek, and uh, I want all of us to put that attention and attention of what we do, say, think, feel, and believe to what we want in the context of wisdom and faith uh, to shorten the, the, between our behaviors and the results, outcomes, and consequences that we want are better. Uh, that is incredible, Robin. I wish you a great new, great holiday. Enjoy uh, yourself, and next year is going to be even better and better for all of us. Nick, why don't you go ahead? Uh, anybody would like, by the way, the habit machine that I've created in order to help people effectuate shortening that distance, just email me, david at dmelter.com. We'd be happy to send that to you, david at dmelter.com. Nick, go ahead for our next friend. Beautiful. Let's keep it rocking and rolling here. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Eric who's been patiently waiting here on stage. So, Eric, happy Friday. Thanks so much for joining us. Feel free to unmute yourself and share your takeaway of the year. Hey, happy new year, everybody. Um, I have three quick ones. Just um, I'm trying to practice to learn how to surrender and trust, even in my driving, um, just in in every action that I'm doing. And I've struggled with that a lot. Uh, getting out of my comfort zone is, is something that I always thought of I'm falling back into this this cocoon, and uh, 
learning out of my comfort zone. Recently, I'm trying to do a retreat for people that are elderly in recovery, can't afford to go to these retreats. And it's mindfulness, yoga, acupuncture, and I, I started putting together this thing to do monthly. And it's amazing how many people reach out and are wanting to help to put this together. And that when you want to help others and you want to give and, and do the right thing and really, you know, put that out there, the universe will, will just give you the right people and it just all comes together. And everybody got the game. Beautiful. Um, yeah, and you're take, I'm going to take one on the webinar. We're blessed to be on our 25th year of doing a end of the year training. We've done training for over 24 years, rounding into 2024, uh, conveniently enough. I'm going to take one here from Tanya. She said to continue to forgive my parents oh, as it moves on. There we go. Continue to forgive my parents and just be the best version of myself I can be. Basically, don't turn into my parents and be of service always. You know, <clears throat> what's so difficult is uh, the ignorant arrogance of people who love us the most. Um, and when we utilize forgiveness as a reflection of our love that we have for our parents instead of resistance uh, for our parents, you know, there's three stages that we go through with our parents. One is at first we idolize them. Uh, and then second stage is we demonize them. And then the third stage is we humanize them. We humanize them with forgiveness as we create the situational knowledge and experience of how difficult it is to be perfect. And uh, when we start off stage one uh, with an image and idealistic vision of our parents and a perfection, uh, our me immediate reaction when we realize that they are human is demonization. And then through forgiveness, a reflection of the love that we have for our parents, humanization uh, but more importantly uh, what we want to do is understand forgiveness <clears throat> will feel uh, all all of the ignorant arrogance of our parents and when I say ignorant arrogance of our parents is there's two types of ignorant arrogant people remember ignorant people <clears throat> don't know what they don't know um, ignorant humble people know that they don't know what they don't know and they let us know that they don't know what they don't know uh, but ignorant people pretend like they do. Um, and there's two motivations behind one are the haters of the world that are hurt and hurt people hurt people. Uh, so they utilize ignorant arrogance in order to project their hurt onto us and attack us and hate us and uh, do unkind things. And then the most dangerous, though, for me are, is this parent uh, takeaway. Uh, where our parents love us so much. And for all of us that are parents, I'm sure it will resonate with you. And because our parents love us so much inherently, genetically, genetically they're more are afraid for them. They're more afraid for us than they are for anything. And therefore, when they give us advice, uh, they actually are projecting their fear. Fear creates interference and uh, when they do so. And so we have to forgiving for the good intentions of our parents for loving us so much and projecting their insecurity or their fear upon us. And so forgiveness is an action of love that heals the ignorant arrogance, that heals the interference that they've created by wanting more for us and for loving us and being more afraid for us. And so... I want you to use forgiveness as a reflection of your love. And I want you to work in even the unforgivable and forgiveness will heal all, especially with our parents, uh, for the idolization, demonization, and humanization process that we go through relationships that we have with our parents. And so I encourage everyone to utilize forgiveness for everyone in 24 as the world becomes more superior and superior, as we will heal that and reaffirm the holiness of oneness, of a unified, abundant system that we all belong to, uh, utilizing forgiveness as the reflection of love, utilizing forgiveness to 
the idolization, demonization, and humanization process of parenting, whatever it may be, utilize forgiveness to heal all wounds. Thank you. Uh, what a great takeaway here uh, on the webinar. We are rolling and moving. Uh, Nick, why don't you bring up our next friend? Absolutely. We will keep it rocking and rolling live here on Clubhouse. And who has been patiently waiting. So, excuse me, Brent, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and share your takeaway of the year. Welcome. Oh, Brent, the unmute button is in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Um, if you have any difficulties, we can, of course, come back to you as well. Uh, looks like Brent is having some here, so I will pass it over to Ron, who is patiently waiting. Ron, thanks so much for joining us each and Hey, Nick, Ron, how, are you so, how are you so sure they're patiently waiting? What if they're not patient? <laughs> I know Ron is very, very patient, especially because he's here each and every Friday. So, Ron, thanks so much for joining us, and feel free to share your takeaway. You got it, and you are right, because that is one of my takeaways from this year is patience. In the beginning of this year, of last, of 2023, uh, I was stuck, I was a little lost, and then somehow the universe uh, connected me with you, Dave, and then your terrific crew. And now I have learned to be more persistent, consistent, like you te teach us. The things that are happening to me are just amazing. Um, and then obviously gratefulness because I kept feeling like, why are bad things happening to me? And, you know, or not the right things. And then the most important thing that I've learned, Dave, that you've taught me is to stop trying to control the outcome where I always pushed where, you know, all right, I want it now, I want it to be done sooner, whatever it would be. And uh, since studying under you, coach, you know, uh, it's just my, my blood pressure has gone down physically. Like uh, my doctor has seen different things than me, and um, I'm just not as stressed about trying to control things and let the universe do its work. And so patience, gratitude, and most of all, um, understanding other people's um what they're going through in life um you know we start a nonprofit this year and it opened up my eyes even more to um unfortunately what people are going through every single day um and so dave you just opened up my heart for a level and um i'm, I'm very excited to see what next year brings so love you coach i love you too and I love the takeaway of forgiveness, gratitude, and patience, as Ragu also had mentioned here on uh, the webinar, as the multicast is going out everywhere for takeaways of the year. Um, but it is difficult to understand the reconciliation, Ron, of being a ferocious Buddha. And when I say being a ferocious Buddha, it's how is it that each day I can, you know, have the the determination and the discipline and the persistence but yet not care about outcomes or not attach my emotions to the outcome or not get impatient about the outcomes results and consequences uh that's why what i try to teach and in, in my takeaway is putting that distance with wisdom and and faith uh but even more importantly understanding the reconciliation of the time zones that occur when you understand surrender. Uh, I surrender to the path because it's infinite and I give it the meaning that I want to give it in order to help me get to where I want to be or better. But I also surrender to the future, number one, by increasing or expanding my own self-image, notating that I'll never overachieve my own self-image, but more importantly, that I am incapable of understanding or knowing the progress that I'm making each day and I'm incapable of knowing or understanding that outcome of each day, that result of each day, the consequences that I am aware of each day, I'm incapable of understanding or knowing how they're protecting, promoting, and loving me. And so it requires wisdom and faith in order to remind, remember, and recollect that it is protecting, promoting, and loving me, even if it's completely divergent from what I think I want in the future. And those impressions today create the expressions tomorrow. And if I can utilize them in faith as you have 
happening this year, there's actually a physical, a biochemical, biotomical result. And it's called dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. It's dose happiness. And when I met you, for example, and so many others who I, they're full of cortisol, inflammation, interference. And uh, what it does is it sucks and bleeds you of your light. It sucks and bleeds you of your love. It sucks and bleeds you of the omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing source that you're connected to and through. And it sucks out the wisdom and faith. And it contributes to an exponentiality of negative behavior and negative progress, which creates negative consequences, results, and outcomes. And uh, you've been an incredible student of mine uh, through 2023. And I know that the consequences, results, and outcomes are exponential for those who are consistent in the mindset, heart, and hands set of that wisdom and faith. And being consistent, persistent in that pursuit uh, has allowed you to uh, not only pursue in passion, purpose, and profitability your potential, but reach closer and closer each day. And I have all the gratitude, love, and forgiveness forgiveness uh, in my heart for you, your family, and the community that you're building and everything that you're doing. Thank you, Ron. Happy New Year. We love you. Uh, Nick, we're at halftime right here as your Lions uh, are waiting to go to the playoffs and maybe win the NFC. We'll be seeing them in the playoffs and wondering what they're going to do at halftime. Why don't you represent the Lions and give us a little halftime speech or uh, set the stage for the second half? <laughs> My pleasure, and boy, oh boy, am I excited about those lines. Uh, with that said, everybody, as David said, we are halftime here of uh, David Melter's Power Hour with the Breakfast with Champions community, the best in Clubhouse. Um, it is 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the West Coast, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. And as we continue to take these incredible or share these incredible takeaways of the year, please make sure that if you would like to share, you are requesting to join the stage or sending me a message in the room chat. And we will, of course, aim to bring you up. Um, but with that, David, I am just overwhelmed with the abundance in terms of and insights through the takeaways, let alone the requests. So I'd suggest let's keep it rocking and rolling live here on Clubhouse, and then we can take another one from the webinar shortly afterwards. Does that sound fair? That sounds more than fair. Who's up next? Beautiful. Let's keep it rolling. Roland, we have Christina who has joined the stage, or excuse me, Christine. So Christine, feel free to unmute yourself and share your takeaway of the year. Oh, Christine, the unmute button is, oh, there we go. Oh, good morning. Um, hope everyone is having a wonderful holidays season. Um, but my great, great takeaway of the year is learning how to be more consistent. Uh, I am a, um, a nurse by profession, and I'm transitioning into be, be, uh, developing and building my own brand and um just coming into these room in this room uh um every morning most mornings i've learned so much what it takes to uh to be a world-class uh entrepreneur so uh just learning how to be patient and to enjoy the moment and um my word um for the 2024 year is going to be um, joy. So I've decided to enjoy the moment and, and just and, and, and find joy in every day and especially building um, this new brand. So I love listening to the uh, experts in this room, especially you, David. How Please kind of let me know. I think you give some of the most phenomenal advice. I just um, always miss the beginnings. But, yeah, that's my takeaway is to be more consistent and uh, just find joy in every moment of your life. So that's what I wanted to say. Uh, that's beautiful, and I appreciate that. And I want to remind everyone, um, first of all, thank you for service as, as well. Uh, just always uh, grateful for those uh, people that 
of service others and as a reminder uh coming from the service industry uh that although we do put everyone else first the best way to put everyone else first is to put ourselves first so we can give more to others as well and i know teachers and nurses and doctors and first responders and our vets and our military active and spouses of military etc and spouses of service uh their biggest challenge is to remember to take care of themselves uh as well so i want to make sure that as a reminder of that. And then as far as building a brand, uh, you know, I think it's really important to know our own essence uh, in understanding the size, scope and scale of the audience of the millions of people that will resonate with us. And although millions of people resonate with us, if we're consistent, 10% of those millions of people will love us no matter what, but also 10% won't. <laughs> And we're like Tabasco in a wound. And that's why what other people think of us is our business. And forgiveness is a great agent to those percent that just don't resonate with us. And then through consistency, being able to raise uh, the spectrum, the powerful message, the clarity of the message with the 80% will build that community of people that want to help each other and know people that can help each other. And a brand is built by its essence and community. And if you're not focused in on your essence, your skills, your knowledge, and your desire, and resonating, just like Noah grew his community with his arc, you are building your community with this of champions and other platforms out there in person, on the phone, via email and media, social and traditional, building that community of people that want to help each other, people that can help each other, that resonate with your essence, your skills, your knowledge and your desire. Happy New Year. What a brilliant takeaway for everyone to share coming into 2024. Nick, you want me to take a, one on uh, the webinar? Yeah, go ahead and take one off the webinar, and then we have Judith and Patricia that will be ready to rock and roll when we come back to the house. All right, and a big shout out here. I'm seeing comments from uh, my dear, one of the youngest mentees I had, Casey Adams, if you're not following him, and an old friend of mine, Brandon Steiner, is in the house. Uh, love, uh, love you, Brandon, as well, and has uh, been a big, big influence in the sports world, collectibles world. And has uh, and deserves all the success that he's had uh, in his career. So, two great people here with us today, um, and a uh, lot of takeaways on forgiveness and gratitude. Uh, let's see here from Frank Villa. My biggest takeaway of the year was to render to the will of the Great Spirit or God. We are needed to be this year. We can create the biggest impact. Uh, a great takeaway and understand uh, the fastest and easiest way to get to where we want to be is to number one ask someone that's already there for help uh, and the number one person or thing or source that we uh, is there is uh, the omniscient all-powerful and all-knowing and so I pray and I meditate every day uh, for the help that I need in fact my first prayer of the day is may God put in front of me 10 people that I can help and 10 people that can help me minimum. Uh, and understanding the uh, easiest and fastest way to get to where I want to be is find someone that's already there and ask them for help, but also help other people get to where they want to be. And uh, the facilitation of those two things is an illustration of in spirit, it's an illustration of inspiration, it's an illustration of faith, Wisdom of the omniscient, all-knowing, infinite, unified system of words, thoughts, beliefs, and feelings that we all belong to. And utilization of gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and that inspiration will give us the acceleration and aggregation, the compounding of the correct positive outcomes, consequences, and results, or better, that we're looking for Um and I want to thank Frank for being a big part of our community throughout the years as well. As a big shout out to him. We have so many people online, so many people with comments, so many people here trying to share their takeaways of the day. Nick, why don't you keep this party rolling here at the end of the year? 
Absolutely. It is a pleasure and an honor. Judith, who has been patiently waiting here on Clubhouse, is ready to share her takeaway of the year. So, Judith, feel free to unmute yourself using the microphone in the lower right-hand corner of your screen and bless us with your beautiful takeaway of the year. My beautiful takeaway of Last year, this employee for a um, non-emergency and now I have my own non-emergency transport. So I am truly blessed to be through having the courage to be able to do this. And my was called to be more interested than interesting. And I try to open myself up to help other entrepreneurs and be willing to listen to what they have to say and what their fears are and steer them into Breakfast of Champions and steer them to David's book and try to get them um, to understand about gratitude and about living um, a gratuitous life. And I just want to say, David, thank you very much. I don't miss your power hours and your trainings and all of that. And thank you for being the man that you are. Oh, well, bless you as well. And I appreciate it. And one of the questions I have is uh, trying to empower some people uh, to be happy to learn those lessons of abundance to make more money, help more people and have more fun, uh, which is completely indicative of what you're doing by taking control and starting uh, that own, your own medical transport company this year and congratulations. And I appreciate that. And the best thing that you can do for our community is share this content and do good deeds like you're doing. If all of us do that, uh, the exponentiality of the effort uh, will uh, create amazing amount of light and liberate so many others to have that light as well um if anyone does want my book uh, i'm still giving it away for free i pay for shipping the book uh, ebook audiobook i don't care just email me david at dmelter.com along with the habit machine uh, we can change uh and expand the way you look at things so the things you look at change and expand in the direction of the results and outcomes and constant you want or better in your life so many of us there's thousands and thousands of people that reach out every day to tell me this shit works so i know that we're getting somewhere it may not be perfect but it certainly is progress and i appreciate the progress that all of us have made in 2023 and our uh, pursuit of the perfection is terrific uh, it's the progress from the good behaviors that i uh, truly enjoy and it brings great light to me to liberate others as well and remember you know the darkness out there it's loud but it's weak uh the darkness out there is loud and weak uh, uh one particle of your light will overcome a million particles of that loud weak darkness so have faith and have the wisdom within and share it uh without uh thank you so so much 2024 is going to be better for you i promise and continue the consistent persistent pursuit of your potential by being more interested than interesting nick where do you want us to go do we got more friends online or you want me to take it to the training we definitely have more friends online let's take one more from clubhouse and then we can take one from the webinar as we will be then trickling into the fourth quarter of this incredible power hour uh, so with that said i will pass it over to patricia patricia thanks so much for joining us here on stage feel free to unmute yourself unmute yourself and share your takeaway of the year thank you nick um and thank you dave i want to say thank you for the book i received the book it's very powerful it's so ironic because I've been working on building a foundation of principles uh, based on my nonprofit organization. And uh, I often use the analogy of building blocks and how we have to have the right foundation or it will crumble. And having to develop a that uh, teaches the teacher has been a little bit difficult because you always get a little pushback. You want to. Um, implement things that's going to grow the business, but not just the business, but also grow the person that's in the business. And so oftentimes they don't see the growth because sometimes you may have been in the business of training for so long, they don't really recognize that there are areas that they still need learning and we have to be teachable. And so I'm really loving the foundation of principles and trying to develop that. That has helped me um, understand 
understand the importance of, as the CEO and founder, I, what I need to do to make sure that I'm passing the baton to the next person that's going to take over once I'm no longer in the position that I'm in. And so um, the biggest struggle for me that uh, I'm having is paying myself first uh, and, and, and knowing all the all that I poured in the tears of sweat and recognizing that you do need to be receiving on the receiving end and not always on giving end. So um, that's, that's a problem. And learning, I'm getting there, but I'm, my biggest takeaway is just that foundation. So thank you so much, and I would love, love, love if you will consider to be on my podcast. Thank I love, you. thank you, thank you, and what a great reminder of the three stages uh, and understanding that receiving is so important. And it's a lot of people out there understand appreciation and gratitude. They appreciate everything that they have. They find the light, the love, and the lessons, and everything that they have. And a lot of people believe that acknowledgement in order to acquire the knowledge requires you to give it away. And if we give it away, we'll receive more, which I absolutely believe math mathematics and theoretical physics is true. Uh, but acknowledgement goes much farther than just the more we give, the more we receive. Acknowledgement occurs by not having what we have or what we appreciate anymore. Acknowledgement occurs by not having what we have or appreciate uh, from before. And we acquire the knowledge when we don't have what we used to have or we used to appreciate. And that can also occur not just by giving, but by having it stolen from us, cheated, lied, or manipulated from us. Um, but vessel grows. We expand through the acknowledgement. We expand through the appreciation. Uh, but in the sense of theoretical physics and applied mathematics, that if we don't ask for more and start by asking for more, then we will have less to give. And although we'll receive more, we'll receive more of less. And eventually that dissipation will evolve what we have and we'll have less and less to give. And we won't have the power, the light or the acknowledgement in order to give even more. So, what I suggest is start by asking for more. And when we ask for more, we receive more. And when we receive more, we can give more. And if we give more, we will get more. Instead of if we give less of what we have, because we have less, receive less. Even though it's more of less, it's still going to be less, which is an acceleration in the wrong direction. So I want people to start with receiving and tell themselves that, I can give more. If I give more, I can receive even more. And then I receive even more by asking even more. So it's not just preaching. It's not just acknowledgement, but it's asking for more. The first step in giving more is to ask for more. Uh, thank you so much for that great reminder and that great takeaway for the year. Uh, Nick, would you like me to take one here? Uh, we have, by the way, uh, we capped it this year. We have over 100,000 people registered for the online training. It is repurposed, redistributed, and posted uh, in all the different platforms. So uh, it has uh, millions of opinions, over 100,000 people registered. This is over 24 years. has been a great accomplishment in people that want to help each other and know people that can help each other. So I want to thank all of you for being a part of 24 years. This is our 20th end of the training with takeaways of the year. Nick, is it okay if I take one uh, from the webinar? Absolutely. Do you want me to do a quick reset of the We just entered the fourth quarter of this incredible power hour. I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yep, I got you loud and clear now. You want me to do a quick reset of the room? Before yes, please. Of yeah, please. This is the fourth quarter. Okay. Put up your fingers. It's fourth quarter. Fingers up. Everybody, incredible takeaway of the year power hour with the one and only David Elster. We do have time for a few more takeaways to be shared. So if you would like to share, please request to join the stage and we will first to bring only as we round out David's hour, but as we look to the next hour with Aria, continue to share this room.
all of our friends, family, colleagues, and everyone that we know would benefit from this incredible conversation. Um, and lastly, as David mentioned as well, whether it's the habit machine guide that he has created, whether it's a copy of his book, which he's more than happy to send a copy, sign a copy, and even pay for shipping completely for free. All you need to do is email him directly, david at dmeltzer.com, and that email can also be found at the room chat. And then uh, with that said, David, I'll pass it back over to you to take a takeaway of the year from the webinar. Yeah, one of my faves, uh, Mark, Marco Antonio uh, has his uh, takeaway of the day, uh, which is one of my takeaways this year is to listen 10 times more than I speak. When speaking, there's more lessons to learn from asking questions. And this is directly related to one of the favorite guides that I've created called the Open-Minded Open Question Guide. And so within the context of learning and understanding we have two ears and only mouth and understanding how to be more interested than interesting is the understanding that one, we need to qualify people uh, that have an open mind. Statistically, uh, we could share value uh, 1,000 times easier or more with people who have an open mind than a closed mind. And everyone has an open mind. Uh, people have minds at different times. In fact, people that uh, sometimes it's more favorable to find someone who has an open mind that normally doesn't than someone that has an open mind most of the time or the majority of the time. And the reason is, is that people like me who have an open mind the majority of the time have so many options, opportunities, and touches of favor, it's harder to prioritize opportunities and options and touches of favor where those who have closed mind that you catch when they have an open mind have very few options, opportunities, and touches of favor. And so it's a much easier uh, statistical success with the people that have open minds some of the time or very little of the time than all the time or most of the time. Uh, but even more importantly, after we qualify someone that has an open mind, knowing that people with open minds have open hearts and open hands, is that we have to listen. And in order to listen, we have to stimulate that listening by asking a question. Uh, and when we can ask a question, uh, and I want people to focus in on for the sake of what, when we ask questions, and when we ask questions for the sake of what, we're asking about for the sake of solar or for the sake of coaching or for the sake of book writing or speaking, for the sake of some sort of quantum mechanics or some sort of ERP system or SFA system or VA uh, virtual assistant system, whatever the sake of what is, uh, the subject matter and topic pertaining to for the sake of what, when we ask an open-ended question, we can learn about what's important to other people. And when we understand how someone's perspective is rel relative to the importance of the subject matter top that they're explaining, we then can seek the emotional connection that they have to the perspective that they are sharing with us that was stimulated by a question. And when that occurs, that understanding of what they like and don't like about that specific topic or subject matter or solution uh, a brand or whatever it may be, we now have an ability to share value. And the reason we have the ability to share value, is there's only two ways to share value. One is to give people more of what they like, or two, to take away some, if not all of what they don't like. And if you're able and capable of doing that, you then can articulate a quantitative context of sharing that none of that occurs through the open-minded open question guide in order to facilitate the quantification and articulation of that value not occurs if you're not more interested than interesting if you don't ask questions if you don't listen and it's not what they say it's what you hear so the better you get it hearing and listening to what they say and understanding it and getting alignment with emotional connect value of what they like and what they don't like, the more you'll accelerate aggregate, the more the outcomes will compound exponentially in the trajectory or direction of the results, outcomes, and consequences that you want or better. This is a huge takeaway for anyone who has children, a huge takeaway for anyone who runs a business, any entrepreneur, any salesperson, 
This is one of the best takeaways that I have learned and practiced still to this day to get better and better at the open-ended question and open-minded guide that I have. And it's a template, a guidepost for your success and abundance of building a community of people that want to know each other. If you want that guide, just email me, david at d.com, along with the book that I give for free or anything else. All you got to do is email me, david at dmeltzer.com. I also want to encourage people to join us in person. Uh, we to be in two different cities scheduled 2024, uh, starting off with CES Mastermind. We have a conversation with Dane Cook and I, a VIP dinner with Dane Cook and I, the comedian. It's a deep conversation with a humorous intonation and tone uh come and join us january 9th and 10th and then january 11th we'll be with the aspire tour i think about five times next year but spending on my birthday january 11th it'll be gary vaynerchuk gary v me joe montana tim story and dan fleischman just a whole bunch of great people with the aspire tour and they're throwing me a birthday party afterwards i heard so we'll have a surprise musical guest uh come and join us in santa clara on january 11th if you want to find out in these two hot cities join our text community get alerted that's the only way i know where i'm going to be it's 949-298-2905 nick once you reset the room as we're coming into the last five minutes uh maybe share the email and text number one more time and then we'll take somebody in the clubhouse. Beautiful, beautiful. Quick reset of the room, everybody. This has been an incredible power hour. Sharing our takeaways of the year, um, of course, with the best community here on Clubhouse, uh, the Breakfast with Champions, and with the one and only David Meltzer. Um, as David mentioned, whether it's his Habit Machine Guide, whether it's his book completely for free, or whether it's in person in Las Vegas to kick off the year, uh, for the conversation with Dane Cook or even Aspire um, for David's keynote and celebrating his birthday. All you have to do to join us is email David directly at dmelzer.com and you can find that email as well in the room chat. Now, with that said, we will keep it live here on Clubhouse and Jonathan, who has joined the stage, is here to share his takeaway of the year. So, Jonathan, thanks so much for joining us. Feel free to unmute yourself, unmute yourself and share your takeaway. You made him wait too long. He's not patient. Yeah, it's on me. Jonathan, if you, uh, excuse me, if you're able to unmute yourself, it would be the lower right-hand corner of your screen for the microphone. And if not, um, it looks like we, he is having some difficulty. So I will pass it over to Serafina. Serafina, thanks so much for joining us. Feel free to unmute yourself and share your takeaway of the year. Hello, thank you for calling me and happy new year. So blessed to be part of this community. So this is just my interpretation of my takeaway. It's not necessarily the right or wrong way. But for me, what I've realized is like the only thing between where I am and where I want to go is time and the choices that I make within that time. And with that, it kind of created a strange gap of, I was just trying to get somewhere that wasn't necessarily here. I was like trying to shorten this process and try to somewhere faster. But I realized that the gap between where I am and where I want to be is actually more important than where I want to be it because it's leaving me with like the power of choice to create the reality for myself. So I'm really just trying to embrace more of the transition of where I'm at and just into that rather than trying to get somewhere that's not here in the present moment. Yeah, wow. Um, this is one of my favorite lessons. In fact, it's written in Sanskrit uh, far before any biblical, far before the Course of Miracles or Think and Grow Rich or Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, far before Eckhart Tolle, far before anyone else uh, in the lessons for being human. One of the 12 lessons for being human, and by the way, uh, some of the lessons are about lessons, right? Life is about lessons is one of the lessons. Uh, pain is an indicator that you have a lesson to learn. The lessons will keep on coming until you learn them. But one of my favorite lessons is that there is no better than here. And in the construct of there 
is no better than here lies the time zones of the future, lies the limitations of those time zones, the limitations is the meaning you give it. The limitation of the present is the 24 hours we're given. And the limitations of the future is your self-image because you'll never overachieve your own self-image. And if we realize that there no better than here, then it allows us to reconcile time within the infinite in the constructs. The infinite past with the construct of meaning, the infinite future with the construct of self-image, and now, the present, the here. And the there in the past or there in the future is no better than here. It's just that we can effectuate through what we do, say, think, being productive and gracious here, a better there, but there is no better than here in the present, but there should be better than here in the future. If we're here right now and in the future, meaning in the linear time frame of tomorrow or the next day or year. And so having that perspective, it's at a young age and then showing up here so early for a Friday morning training as New Year's approaches us and the holidays are upon us. Remember that there is no better than here, that we want to stay focused and productive, accessible and gracious today. Give the meaning to the past to help us to get there. And don't limit yourself with a self-image that's lower than it should be to get there. Thank you so much, everyone. I want to remind you, please email me. Stay, stay with this community. This is a community of people that want to help each other and know people that can help each other. We will be there in 2024, learning more, loving more, and of course, sharing more. Please, everyone, be more interested than interesting. Be kind. Be kind in 2024. Be kind to your future self and continue to do good deeds. It's 7 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Nick, close out the room. God bless everyone and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. I appreciate you. An incredible year to everyone. Reach out to me, david at dmelzer.com. If you want to join us in Las Vegas, Dane Cook and I, want to come up to Santa Clara with Gary V, Tim Story, uh, Joe Montana. Just give us a ring, david at dmelzer.com. We appreciate you. We love you. Remind you to be more interested than interesting. Remind you to be kind. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. We'll see you next week on the other side at 1224. Have a great day.